Yeah, let's just start it off. What happened during the break, Arrow? Everything. Everything happened. I think overall this break was definitely kind of kind of overwhelming. We opted to have a two-week break, um, which is something most teams didn't do. Most teams only took one week off. We got lucky with having a uh, bye week in week one, um, so we were able to take that extra week. And goal was let's have you know some off time where people can focus on their lives outside of the game. There was definitely a lot that, that happened. When it comes to RCK and the team, you know, RCK is a great player. You know, the, the trade was not made because we felt like he was bad or you know, poor performance or anything. In synergy, there's a lot of times where there's just this piece that is intangible between, uh, between players, between peers. And when looking at that throughout the stage, it felt like there was just this little piece missing for us. And it's not that, it's not that RCK was bad or that he was a poor teammate or anything like that. Um, in fact, we felt like with our skate, we would still have a fantastic stage two, fantastic rush of the season. And we didn't even really consider trading him until we caught wind that, you know, uh, Boston was interested and Note was interested in possibly coming here. So I took a lot of time to think on, to chew on, to decide, is this what, you know, gonna be beneficial for us? I consulted all of our coaches, I consulted Tasmo, talked a lot about this. Um, we felt like, you know, this was a real opportunity, not just for us, but for RCK. I really felt like if RCK stayed here in this environment right now, he wouldn't truly thrive as a player. Like, he would be good, and I think, you know, we, we could still have a really very positive season, he would still have a positive season, but I don't think that, you know, with that missing piece of just synergy and working together, I don't think that he could have reached his full potential, you know, and, and same thing for us. There was never any, you know, malice or bad feelings or anything like that about the trade. It was just, I felt like for everyone to really thrive, this was the best option for all parties. And you can you can tell already by his performance in week one that even with short practice, like he's thriving there. And I think that he will, and I'm really happy for him. Hi, I'm uh, Lucas Meisner. I go by Note online, and uh, I play the off-tank role, which lately has pretty much just been D.Va. I think I've heard a lot of good things about how just good the Fuel Org was, and as a team, they've been doing a lot better lately, too. So I think it was going to be a lot of new experiences, and I'm looking forward to what the team can do with me now. In practice, this first week, Note's been doing incredibly well. I think everyone is very, very surprised at how flexible he is and how, how well he feels his communication and overall ability, he's a very good addition to our team. So I think Note is uh, an incredible player. He's a very vocal player and he really fits well um, with OG and the rest of the team. I've got a lot of respect for literally every player on this team. And I've been watching these players for a long time and it's just cool to be playing with them. I think it only took a few days and I already feel like I'm at home with the team. Um, I think our styles really play well together. And I think as a team, we're really starting to, to mesh well. You know, while we were good in stage one, I think that, you know, now we can be excellent. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to show Note's abilities and be able to push him to the next level and push our whole team to the next level. So it's going to be a really cool thing. And yeah, everyone's very happy, very excited. I think we've got a really good shot of winning a lot of our games here. I think we're meshing well as a team. I think the meta fits our play styles well. I think it fits all the players well. And I'm really excited for it. When it came to Coco opting to retire, it's something that in talking with him, it was he kind of lost his passion for Overwatch and wanted to move on to other things. And I totally respect that. One of my core foundations as a head coach is I want to make sure that my players and my staff value their happiness, um, their overall happiness, you know, and maybe, maybe that means they, you know, put their passions aside for a stage and grind it out. But if they don't see like happiness in the future and, and want to move on, like I want to respect that. And so, you know, with Coco, that's kind of where he was. So what that meant for us is, you know, we you know had to find another coach uh, to come in and, and, and kind of fill that spot. I'm Julien Ducrot and uh, I'm an assistant coach in Dasswell. 
I did join Paris Eternal as a head coach, and during the season and notably the stage one, I ended up being not happy with my own performance and how the team uh, direction was going. So I basically reached management and said that I wasn't happy with how things were and that I wanted to leave the team. I knew that I didn't want to be a head coach anymore because I wasn't happy with it. And the best um, option I could get was to get back to assistant coach. We had our eyes on a few coaches. I always try to keep tabs on you know the coaches out there. And when we caught wind that Damon was kind of unhappy with the pair situation and was looking for other opportunities, um, you know, I reached out and just in our first meeting, you know, I could tell like this is the guy that I want. I want to fill this spot. When I knew there was an opportunity with that as well, that was the best path I could get to grind back on my confidence, my productivity, and my motivation. Like the staff, the players, and the whole organization is really good. So I'm really happy to join that as. So the initial role um, for Damon coming into this this team is the tank coach idea, where he's putting a lot of time and attention into Note and OG. Um, and, and as we kind of worked on, I kind of realized um, that he has a very good mind for uh, strategy and analyzing and optimizing little things, fixing little mistakes in general. Um, and so he's kind of taking on a broader role. We ended up having me as a strategist, kind of, and uh, position coaching kind of change in the whole coaching stuff. So right now, I'm just taking care of like strategy with Arrow and see where it goes. I think Damon really fills what we need in the coaching staff and, and, and his, his perspective and his abilities, I think, are gonna complement us greatly. In the short time we've been working together, you can tell he's had a very positive impact. And I definitely look forward you know, to the rest of the season with him. Coming here in the first week that I walked with all of them, I was just really impressed. Like everything is structured, everything is organized, everything is like great. That's just really great to be around this kind of environment. Um, and, and I think he's doing fantastic. He fits right in with the coaching staff. Um, it feels like, you know, he, you know he's, he's already family, so it's really cool. I'm just really sad that when we actually uh, win stage two, like get into playoffs and then like win all stage two, that all the credit's gonna go to this guy. You know, he, he just got it. He's, he's gonna get all the credit. All, all the work I do, he's gonna get credit for it. The French are taking over, and it's concerning. I need to keep an eye out for the revolution. When we first found out that Effect was wanting to retire, you know, it was something that um, it was it was surprising, but it, at the same time, it wasn't you know fully surprising because uh, you know coming into the season, Effect came in with great mentality, still had a great mentality throughout the whole stage, and he was a great great teammate and everything. He was doing well. You could tell that he kind of was losing his passion for Overwatch, you know, just the game in general. In in our communication throughout the weeks, you know, you, you could see hints here and there where the game just didn't really, you know, fill his passions anymore. We're a family, and so if, if, if he's at that point where he feels like he needs that, like, I'm gonna support that. And the team as a whole, we're stable enough that, you know, if, if he wants to retire, the team's gonna be okay, but we wanna make sure he's okay as an individual, and so we support him in what he's doing. When it comes to happiness, you, you know, that, that definitely is, is the number one priority. If he is at this point where he feels like he needs to retire for his mental health, like that's an extremely important thing that I believe in and want him to be able to, you know, to grow and work on as a person. You know, even though he didn't really truly get a chance to shine on stage, you know, he still was an incredible player, incredible team and everything. So you know, we, we wish him the best, we support him in everything he does. And I know um, as someone that, that has coached him for a while now and, and had experience with him in the past, you know, he's, he's a fantastic, fantastic player and a great you know, hard-working individual and if he puts his mind to something he's gonna he's gonna conquer it so I know that he's gonna get through everything he's going through and he's gonna do well there he is hey, hey. hey. boy how are we gonna do in stage two? Prediction. I don't see the future, sorry. It's gonna be a great uh, stage. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, hopefully. Did you clap? How does it feel to be back, Arrow? Feels great. I'm excited to get back to work. Breaks are nice and all, but um, I think everyone agrees that like they wanna be playing, so I think everyone's happy to be back.
Coming into our first week of practice, you know, the beginning of the week was definitely a bit tough because we were starting later than other teams. Or other teams already had practice on this patch and this meta. Um, plus, we had a bunch of changes we had to work out for ourselves. So the first few days were a little tough. Um, you know, you definitely could see a lot of synergy, things that we needed to work on, a lot of little things about learning the meta and what changes happened and, and how to best adapt to them. As we, you know, powered through it and, you know, adapted and worked on our stuff, it felt like we had real growth happening. You know, to the point where scrim started going really well. We're very happy with how things are going and, and, and seeing how the teams are playing in scrims and on stage, we feel like this stage based on our schedule and everything, it's going to be a really good stage for us. That we feel like this could be a stage where, you know, we have a, a serious impact and, and really can, can go deep in playoffs. As long as we can, you know, keep clicking at the rate we are now and keep growing at the rate we are now, I think we're going to be a serious contender. You know, we're really happy with, with the growth of this week and really excited to see how the stage turns out for us.